Hi, let's talk about TempDB today. TempDB is a system database in SQL Server and it is used to store a lot of temporary objects that uh, SQL Server might be using in its day-to-day -day operation. Uh, one of the problems with TempDB is the size. It keeps growing and sometimes DBAs and developers are clueless as to why TempDB is growing to hundreds of GBs in size. The first important step here is to classify what exactly is TempDB storing and the usage of TempDB can be classified in multiple ways. For example, it might be storing a lot of temporary objects. Uh, these objects could be temporary local tables, it could be uh, temporary global tables, it, could, it can also be temporary uh, table variables. Um, well, uh, sometimes uh, there's a myth that let's say table variables are only created in memory. Uh, which is not correct. Uh, TempDB is used to create even uh, table uh, variables. So these temporary objects will be stored in uh, TempDB. TempDB is also used for internal work tables. Now you might have many workloads and queries that are using expensive sort operation or hash operations. And sometimes when there is not enough memory to complete these operations in memory, data might be spilled down to TempDB. In such cases, it is important to identify which workload is actually spilling down a lot of data in TempDB. So internally, work tables are created uh, where this data is stored. A lot of features uh, use TempDB, for example, row versioning or even for that matter, snapshot isolation feature where again, uh, multiple versions of the same row is being maintained. And where are those versions being stored? Well, they again go to TempDB. So if you see, there are different ways on how TempDB uh, is uh, used and uh, it stores all this data. One of the things about TempDB is when it stores data, of course, the data files grow. And uh, once they grow and they, are, they become humongous in size, and once the job is done, there might be enough available free space in that data file, but the overall size of TempDB data files, they do not shrink until and unless you manually uh, execute the shrink operation. So on a given server, it might really occupy more than a terabyte or even you know close to a couple of terabytes uh, as we sometimes see in production environment. Uh, the only way to get back uh, that space uh, or reclaim that space is to shrink TempDB data files. Now, shrinking TempDB data files and the overall TempDB uh, database, uh, let's keep that for uh, another video, but uh, note that you've got to do that. Or you could restart SQL Server instance and TempDB will, uh, TempDB will go back to its normal size. Now, of course, don't take this as a advice from me that you have to restart SQL Server to you know get TempDB back to, the, uh, to its uh, original size. Restarting SQL Server should not be done. I mean, of course, there are a lot of protocols and compliance issues and you just need to follow what your organizational policies are. Otherwise, in a 24 by 7 production environment, why would you just simply restart a SQL Server instance to bring TempDB back to its original size? But that's just a way uh, to know that. And uh, another thing is a uh, couple of best practices with TempDB. Uh, Keep its original size up to a good point. Uh, don't let it be, uh, don't keep that to a few MBs. Uh, of course, keep a few GBs, uh, maybe even 500 GB for that matter. If you see that 500 GB is the normal usage of TempDB in your environment, you may want to keep that much because you want to avoid frequent auto growths of uh, TempDB data files because that might affect performance of your transaction and your workloads if uh, a few uh, frequent auto growth is uh, triggered. Also, uh, TempDB uh, data files should be uh, uh, spread across uh, in sense uh, you may want to have as many data files as number of procs, probably up to a limit of 16 or 32. That's what I've seen. It works good if you have, let's say, 8 or 16 or 32 uh, data files. Um, today, there are servers with, uh, you know, more than 100 cores and that's not very uncommon nowadays, but I have not seen too much of usage or deployment scenarios where you have like more than 100 data files for TempDB. I don't even know if, let's say, having 196 data files is supported with TempDB or not, but then uh, theoretically speaking, 1632 configuration works best. Um, or in early days with earlier versions of SQL Server, we had to do that manually. But I guess starting from SQL Server 2016, you can uh, actually 
configure the number of data files for TimDB during installation. There are other good uh, tricks uh, that you can apply with TimDB so that the performance uh, goes uh, pretty fast. Uh, let's say you can put TimDB data files on a local SSD storage and that's a great technique to boost uh, SQL Server performance if, uh, if your applications are using TimDB heavily. Of course, also search on Google uh, more about eager writes uh, uh, in TimDB. Uh, these are things that uh, uh, some optimizations that were done by the product teams and they're just great. So you know how you could improve TimDB performance and how eager writes work. So these are certain hot fixes that came up with uh, different service packs um, and were applied with uh, TimDB. So this, uh, this video uh, just talked uh, a few things about uh, TimDB. The subject is much larger, but uh, these were certain quick tips and some uh, quick know-how. And that's what SQL Shigra and these videos are all about, quick know-how. So if you like the video, do share it with your friends and colleagues. And I will see you soon in another video. Thank you and have a good day.